the regular season is over. There's no more this team needs to beat this team and then this team ties, then you get this, and then you get that, and then you get this, and then you get that, and then this team will make the playoff, and then that team will make the playoff for this, to, that, 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 it's over. Regular season football is over. We have our 14 teams, seven on the AFC side, seven on the NFC side. You have the Packers in the NFC with the bye, and you have the Titans in the AFC with the bye, the highest of the high. But today we're going over Super Wild Card Weekend, AFC edition. The first matchup we have is the number five Las Vegas Raiders. Still feels weird. Number five Las Vegas Raiders heading to Cincinnati to face off against the Red Hot Bengals. The Bengals are one of the hottest teams in the NFL. It's not even it's not even a question. It's not even a like maybe maybe not. No. Bengals offense is hot. You got Joe Burrow. He's coming off the injury last year and everybody thought he might have that sophomore slump. There's no sophomore slump. Joe Burrow is that guy. He is killing it. He's slinging the ball left and right. Him and Herbert really show that draft class as a good quarterback draft class. And those guys are going to be battling out in the AFC for years to come. You also got Joe Mixon, the top five bona fide running back in the backfield. The defense, defense is middle of the pack. They just need to be good enough to hold teams down a little bit while you keep just piling on the points. I've seen much worse defenses win Super Bowls. And they're giving up 22 points per game. The Bengals can score 22 points per game throughout the playoffs. No question about it. And they got the man, the myth, the legend. One of the greatest rookie seasons we've ever seen. And even Chris Carter said it. And he played with Randy Moss, who a lot of people thought was the greatest rookie season of all time. No, we just saw Jamar Chase. This guy is unbelievable. One of the top receivers in all the playoffs, all the NFL right now. Do you guys remember where Jamar Chase was? right before the season. Do you remember all the slander being thrown at him? Based on everything that's happened, I don't even know if I could watch preseason football anymore. I don't know because at the end of the day, they kept, I mean, I heard so many things about how terrible Jamar Chase is. Jamar Chase is awful. I mean, you had, you had articles like this, Jamar Chase, Penny Sewell, NFL's lowest graded first round picks, just slandering the guy. He's talking about, oh, I can't see the ball because there's no stripes on it like in college. He just sounds ridiculous. And then look at him now. Bengals don't think Jamar Chase is short on confidence after preseason drops. These aren't articles you see about great rookies before the season. Usually these are huge red flags. I mean, I was worried about drafting him in fantasy because you see these articles and you're like, there's no way that this guy can be any good. I mean, <laughs> look at this article. He's, he's He drops that pass in that photo. He drops that pass in that photo. So there's no way that he's gonna be a good receiver. False. Let's move on to their opponent, the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, this team I did not see making the playoffs. There was little to no chance of them making it after what happened with John Gruden, what happened with Henry Ruggs, losing those two guys, all the turmoil around the team. But at the end of the day, they beat the Chargers in that game. They didn't tie, which I think is still ridiculous that people talked about that. Derek Carr, this is his first playoff game of his career, and he had a great season for Derek Carr's standards. This guy's not a top five quarterback. But he is a good quarterback. He had over 4,800 yards, 23 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, and a passer rating of 94. Now, that's not bad. Hunter Renfro is really turned into like a great receiver. Uh, he's not going to be your Jamar Chase. He's not going to be your Devontae Adams. But he's a good receiver, and he deserves some respect. I think he's like a top-tier number two. He's maybe not a number one receiver, but he does enough for the Raiders right now until they can get more weapons around Derek Carr. But... Enough about the Raiders offense. I think one thing we got to give a little more respect to is that Raiders defense. Now, the secondary is not great, but that defensive line is nasty. And there's one player that I think deserves more credit than anybody. And I think deserves just a little more respect because nobody really talks about this guy. You talk about the TJ Watt. You got your Aaron Donalds. But this guy deserves a little more respect. And I'm talking about Max Crosby, okay? Now, he doesn't have the most sacks. TJ Watt's obviously got that. Max Crosby is a monster, a bona fide stud. And the Raiders got lucky picking him later in the draft when they missed on their first round pick at defensive end. I mean, in reality, Max Crosby's really one of the only draft picks that the Raiders have had that have really panned out recently. I mean, look at these numbers. 82 pressures. He leads the NFL in pressures this season. Now, they're not quite sacks, but pressures cause mistakes. Pressures cause quarterbacks to feel flustered. Pressures lead to other things in the future. So, Max Crosby, you're a bona fide star. Tip my hat to you. You're a beast and you deserve all the credit and you deserve a lot more credit than I think you're even getting because right now it's kind of a shame that you don't get as much credit as you deserve and I, I'm here to give it to you, sir. 
You deserve it. It would be a shame not to mention Rich Bisaccia. I think that this guy deserves coach of the year for what he's done, taking over the team in the middle of the season, keeping him on the rails with Derek Carr. And it's, you know, how do you not give this guy coach of the year? It's amazing. They deserve it. He deserves it. And it doesn't matter what happens in this game. They could lose by 30. They could win by 30. I think Rich Bisaccia deserves the coach of the year honors for what he's done with this Las Vegas Raiders team. But with that being said, who's going to win the game? We got a great offense in the Bengals. We have a good offense with the Raiders. Defensive line on the Raiders can get after the quarterback and Joe Burrow can move around a little bit. So in the end of the day, I got the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going with the favorite here. I just think that the offense is too strong. They have too many weapons. Jamar Chase is too big of a monster, but the Cincinnati Bengals are a legitimate, legitimate team. Next on the list, we got the number six seed, New England Patriots versus number three seed, Buffalo Bills. Now this is the third matchup between these two. They're divisional rivals. These guys fight each other every year back and forth, back and forth. It's been a little more interesting since the Bills have gotten Josh Allen and a little more interesting since the Patriots lost Tom Brady. So this game's gonna be historically cold. It's gonna be probably the second coldest game ever in Buffalo. So you wanna know how cold that is? But the last time Buffalo, New England, when they played in Buffalo and it was one of those nasty games, the Patriots won the game and Mac Jones only threw three passes. That's insane. If you're the Bills, you cannot let that happen. You can't let Damian Harris run all over you. You got to be able to stop the run. That's the biggest thing in this game is will the Buffalo defense be able to stop the run? If they can't, this game's over. The New England Patriots are going to win. If they can, if they figured it out, then they're gonna be fine. Mac Jones is gonna throw the ball more than three times, I assume. You gotta be able to stop it. That's the number one thing that the Bills need. Josh Allen, he's been up and down this year. You need running game from the Bills to be better. Bills fans, I don't think there's a fan base that deserves a win more than you guys. A Super Bowl win especially. You lost three Super Bowls in a row in the 90s. You lost a heartbreaker last year to the Chiefs. And there's a lot of tables out there that need to be lit on fire. You guys are gonna go crazy. Bills fans, stand up. Bills Mafia, you guys deserve it. I think that this team is hot. They got a lot of good things going. Defense is playing well. And that regular season win was nice a few weeks back. You need to do it again in a much bigger spot. But of course, the biggest thing standing in the Bills' way is the New England Patriots. They took one year off from the playoffs. They wanted Tom Brady to get his little Super Bowl, whatever. Now they're back. The defense is great. There aren't any COVID holdouts, so they got all those guys back. Run game looks good. Damian Harris is a monster. I have him on my fantasy team. He is a beast. Mac Jones needs to manage the game. He's similar to a young Brady. You kind of let the defense do their thing, and you just pick and choose where you have to help them. But... Run game, defense, that's how New England wins, and they have a legitimate shot. This weather is good for the Patriots. If it was like a nice game, if it was a much like better weather game, I would say Bills are gonna wipe the floor with them. But with this weather, the Patriots have a legitimate chance. And got the short sleeve goat, as they might say, coaching you guys. So I think there's a legitimate chance you can win this game. We'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, my choice of the two, I gotta go with the Bills. You could probably tell from my analysis. I just think they're a stronger team. They've learned from their mistakes in that first loss. And Mac Jones needs to throw more than three times. I think the Bills defense will be ready for this matchup. They'll be ready for that style of play. They're gonna be, they're gonna be pumped up. And I think that I'm going, I'm going favored again because I think they really have a legitimate chance to go all the way to the Super Bowl. Next on the list, we have the number seven Pittsburgh Steelers facing off against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, everybody knows the Steelers got dragged into the playoffs by the Raiders. If that tie would have happened, if they didn't kick that field goal, the Steelers would be sitting at home and the Chargers would be in the playoffs. But you know what? Big Ben, you made it. This is your retirement party. Congratulations. Because I don't see the Pittsburgh Steelers winning this game. The offense is inept. They look terrible. Najee Harris can't save the day. The offensive line is terrible. I mean, he gets hit and he averages like three yards a carry because he's getting hit two yards behind the line. So of course his, his yards per carry are gonna be terrible. What do you what do you think's gonna happen? They're 23rd in total offense. They average 222 passing yards a game. And the defense just has to ball out even for them to have a chance to play well in this game. I mean, they got smacked by the Chiefs 36 to 10 just a few weeks ago. So why would I think that's gonna be any different? Sometimes it is different in the playoffs, but this specific matchup, I don't see it, especially how well the Chiefs defense been playing. But I do have to give props Shout out to Clutch Sports for this awesome image. Doesn't this feel like exactly how Big Ben is playing? Don't you imagine, like when I watch him play, if he has his helmet on, I imagine this is what he actually looks like because that's the way he's playing right now. He looks so old. I don't understand how Tom Brady can look so young playing and lead the league in a bunch of different statistics. And then you have Big Ben and he looks like he's just falling apart. 
and he's much younger than Tom Brady. This is it. this is your retirement part. I would be shocked if you make it past this round. I really don't see. I'm giving away my picks in the analysis. I don't care. Steelers, I just don't even know. But I got to give her some respect to that defense and especially TJ Watt. This guy is a monster. Now, can you imagine being a parent with TJ Watt and JJ Watt as your kids fighting over that last drumstick? I don't know how those parents even kept that dinner table alive. How, like how? These guys are just maniacs. They're monsters. TJ Watt has already kind of stepped out of JJ Watt's shadow. He deserves defensive player of the year. He would have to have an amazing game amazing game to even give the Steelers a shot to win this. But to give those Steelers a shot, you got to beat the Chiefs. Now, this Chiefs team is red hot. They started the season. They were slow. Patrick Mahomes didn't look like Patrick Mahomes. He looked like the guy from that State Farm commercial working at the sneaker store. He didn't look nearly as good. Now, he's on fire. The defense is great. As I mentioned, they beat the Steelers 36 to 10 late December. Mahomes is just getting his groove back. If Mahomes has his groove, the Chiefs are rolling. They have playoff experience. They've been to two Super Bowls in a row. They lost one. They won one. They're ready to go. Andy Reid's a great coach. And the only thing that could bring Patrick Mahomes down is his family. I mean, you've seen his brother doing the crazy stuff. You've seen his wife doing the crazy stuff. The family is the only thing that could bring him down. Other than that, I can't see the Steelers bringing him down. I have the Chiefs winning this game. No spoilers here. I'm going chalk on all of these because based on these matchups, I really do believe the AFC pick the favorites. I think that's the best way to go. Let me know in the comments who you have winning all three of these games. And thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out more of my videos, check out my NFC breakdown of the wildcard weekend right over here. And I'll see you in the next one.